What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Alex. Shout out to the Elite Fleet. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can become a member of the Elite Fleet. And this is a treat I got coming for y'all because those of y'all who know me know I'm undefeated on panels, but I don't really like going on panels like that. <laughs> I don't really like going on panels like that because it's difficult for me, for one, to get on panels because people don't want to debate me. <laughs> people don't want like I got kicked off of this panel because I was having mic troubles and I never really listened back to see if I was having mic troubles. Maybe I was. Maybe I wasn't. But I'll say this. Me and Angry Man have gone back and forth a few times before. So he knows when I come on a panel and I'm bringing smoke to the panel, it's not going to be no easy victory with me. I'm undefeated on panels. And I strongly believe that after this panel, I remain the undefeated champion. Of course, y'all can let me know in the comments. But in my opinion, all right, I'm known for winning debates in the first eight minutes. In my opinion, I did that in this debate without them even realizing that I did it. I used a little bit of a Jedi mind trick on them, but I'll explain that later. But either way, it was a good conversation. Um, Angry Man in there, little podcast is in there, Israel Mills. It was a good conversation. It was kind of me versus a whole bunch of people because most of the people on the panel are Gen X. It's only like three millennials on this panel. So it was me versus the world. But that's fine. I like a good challenge. I believe in the quote, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to find a new room. Right. So I like to go to rooms where people are as, as smart or smarter than me. So that way I'm challenging myself, always learning something new and always getting better. It was a lot of positive things. There's a lot of good things you could pull from this conversation. A lot of good information was shared in this conversation. Um, so debate was basically about should millennials be listening to Generation X? Why millennials don't listen to Generation X? Then it came into like this competition between, you know, who's better between Generation X and millennials and all this other stuff. Before we get into it, I want you guys to know, and I'm not joking. You're going to see this soon. This debate literally started because Sway Producing said, why would millennials listen to a crackhead or someone who's not making as much money as them about life or about basically anything? And apparently Generation X has a problem with that. Which I could understand to an extent because the baby boomers raised you to believe that if anyone's older than you, they're automatically basically smarter than you and you should listen to them. Millennials don't operate like that. And I don't really see a problem with millennials not operating like that. The way millennials and Gen Z operates is if you have something I want or if you're proving yourself to be of worth, right, to be really smart, to be really articulate, to be really athletically gifted, right? You could pull out trophies. You could pull out accolades. You've accomplished something. Then you can talk to me. But if you haven't, I'm not about to just listen to you because you're old. Like, not, no. Unless the conversation is about how to get old, I'm not going to listen to you. And Generation X don't understand that, right? So it basically developed into a conversation about millennials versus Generation X. But like I said, there was a lot of gems sprinkling in here. It was a very good conversation with a lot of different points that I think people can learn from. And it's something a little bit different because, like I said, I haven't done a panel on this in a long time. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. All right, this is Alex versus the Angry Man, little podcast, Israel Mills, and basically a panel of overheads <laughs> about millennials versus Generation X, why there is a gap, why millennials don't necessarily listen to Generation X, and should we be listening to crackheads <laughs> of all people? So without further ado, let's get straight into it. The fam, what's good uh, with you, man? Uh, How you doing? I, I had to drop the $20 for throwing off the rhythm of the show. That, that was my fault because I didn't properly set up. I just heard a good combo going. I wanted to jump in. So, you know, I was going to give you the $20 regardless, even when they were. Now, again, like I told y'all earlier, I don't know if the audio was off or not. I never paid it any. I don't know. Maybe it was. But all I knew was this smoke wasn't getting dodged. So I didn't mind dropping the $20 to get myself right back in there because I was, I was with the shits. <laughs> but let's continue. I dropped down. I was still going to give it to you because I kind of threw the rhythm off. But anyway, going back into what I was originally wanting to talk about, um, I felt like y'all was having a very good conversation when it came to Gen Z and the millennials. But at the same time, I feel like the conversation was kind of heading down the same alley that a lot of times these spaces head in when you start to do kind of like what Angry Man was saying earlier, when you start to do the men and the women. It's just all the men are bad. All the women are bad. Nobody's really listening to each other. And when it comes to certain things, like I feel like millennials can take responsibility, for example, for what our generation got messed up. Now, this is why I say I feel like I won this debate in the first eight minutes. Watch what I'm about to do. I, I want y'all to listen to what I'm about to do. Watch this. Millennials are soft, even as a millennial. Now, I'm a later millennial because I was born in 1990. But still, I'll sit here and tell you all day, yeah, they super soft. 
a lot of us who was born in the earlier 90s will say those from 1995 on forward, we pushed them to Gen Z because of that softness. Even though they're still millennials, we kind of try to push them to Gen Z. We try to claim 1985 to 1995, right? We can eat that. I can take that, right? But what I've noticed about a lot of people in Generation X, any type of criticism is always an excuse for the criticism. Some is valid, don't get me wrong. But there's never a just, okay, we'll own that, we messed that up. Or, okay, we'll own that, we could have did better there. Or, okay, we'll own that, we could have did better there. Like, it's always a, yeah, but there was this, yeah, but there was that, yeah, was that. And I think that that takes away from the conversation because then it becomes combative. Now it's, okay, well, y'all do this, well, y'all do that, well, y'all do this, well, y'all do that. And I feel like the conversation could be a lot more productive if we spent time listening to each other um, in the context of what was just going on as far as respecting your elders just because they're an elder. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to what I just said. This is why I said I won this debate in the first eight minutes. If you, even if you're looking in the chat, I didn't get a chance to read the chat when I was actually in the heat of the debate because I like to focus on the debate when I'm in the debate. But you already see two people saying facts. Another reason why I like to go on other people's panels and challenge them is because, like I said, I like to challenge myself. So besides trying to put myself in a room where people are as, as smart as I am, I also like going into other people's panels and other people's networks because YouTube, everyone builds their own following, right? Your own following, that's kind of, you create your own algorithm, basically, of like-minded people. So I feel like if I can go in a room of someone else's channel and get at least a quarter of the chat to agree with me, that means I know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, that says a lot. So that's another reason why I like to go on other people's panels just as just staying in my own room. Because your own channel can kind of become an echo chamber not even on purpose, but just because if people don't think like you, they're not going to like your channel. I like to go to other rooms to see, am I just staying in the echo chamber and I'm not really as bright as I think I am? Or does my points translate? Can I take my points anywhere? Most of the time, I can take my points anywhere. But the reason I just said I checkmated in the first eight minutes is because I want you all to understand what I did because it's going to play into the rest of this video. I took the L on millennials being soft. Understand something. There's no statistical data that states that millennials are any softer than Generation X was. But I took that L to prove my point. Because if you paid attention to what I just said, I said, Generation X, similar to children, similar to women, no offense to the women listening, they will not take accountability for anything. Everything, there's always an excuse for it. There's always, it wasn't us, it was the silent generation. It wasn't us, it was the boomers. It wasn't us. They never take excuse for anything. Everything, there's an excuse why everything is that's wrong with them is. They never take accountability for nothing. I purposely came in and said, I'll agree that millennials are soft, right? Because I generally accept that to be true. I don't need statistical data for everything. Most people would agree that millennials are soft. They are, right? Now, <laughs> I immediately said, no matter what you said about Generation X, they don't take any accountability. There's always an excuse. Notice in the rest of this entire conversation, Generation X will never admit to anything. Everything negative about them is a debate. Anything positive about millennials or that millennials do better is a debate. That's why I said I won this in the first eight minutes. Because <laughs> I literally said they won't take accountability for anything. And I took accountability and said I will take the L on my generation being soft. And they ain't never took accountability for anything for the rest of this conversation. And the millennials know it. That's why if you look in the chat to the right, they're already saying facts because they've already been hearing this before I got up here. Generation X takes accountability for absolutely nothing. <laughs> so this is why I said I won the debate in the first eight minutes because going forward, they're going to challenge me on every single thing I try to say to uplift millennials or about Generation X. They're never going to take accountability for anything. The debate's already over. That proves that they react to everything like women and children because they won't take accountability for anything. They never do literally this entire video. <laughs> but let's continue. It's already a checkmate, though. I think when it comes to your tone with the elder, I think when it comes to calling the elder out of your name. Look, look in the corner right there at what Princessa said really quick. Look in the corner. She said an excuse or an explanation. It's the same damn thing. No one asked for an explanation. Just take the L. I didn't explain why millennials were soft, did I? Nope. I just said that they were soft. 
Soon as you get an excuse and an explanation, the same thing. If no one asked you to explain why it was and they're just stating that it is and you give an explanation, it's the same thing as an excuse. It's removing accountability at the end of the day. But let's continue. Completely. You should respect your others in that regard. But as far as taking advice or even someone feeling like they could give you advice solely because they're older than you, I would have to disagree on that part. Like, for example, I've made more money than 90% of Gen X in my family. Like, easily 90% of them. So someone wants to come to me talking about money, and you've never even been out of the country, or you want to come to me talking about money, you've never owned any property, you want to come to me talking about money, you don't even have life insurance, you want to talk about money, you don't have a stock portfolio. Why would I sit there and listen to you talk about that because you're older? In all those years, you had the opportunity to do this, and you never did that. If anything, that's a chance where you should be listening to me and let me put you on game from what I've learned because you might just not have been taught. A lot of the people, for example, in my family were never taught these things because their parents didn't know it. My granddad didn't know nothing about stocks to teach my mom about stocks. I had to set up her whole 401k portfolio. I had to show her how to do all that. So when it comes to the money talk, I remember Angry Man mentioned, oh, yeah, Gen X was getting to the money. If you want to call millennials soft, I agree. If you want to call millennials lazy, I don't know that I can necessarily agree with that because I feel like going forward with what Sway was saying, pretty much every millennial I know personally, right, is doing way better financially than most of the Gen X that we grew up with. Like, I've been making more money than my mom since, like, college. My sister's been making more money than my mom since, like, college. My mom makes good money. It's not like she broke. She's still back in New York. She worked for the government or whatever the case may be. Been in the same apartment for years paying well over $2,000 in rent. So it's not like she's broke. We've just been out here. We've been getting it. All of us have our entrepreneur thing going on. All of us are way above $70,000, right? So when it comes to the bread, I agree. Millennials are getting to the bread. The problem with them are they are very emotionally immature. They're emotionally out of control. A lot of them kind of lash out like kids, but I feel like a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of them came from single-parent households, which a lot of them had Gen X parents where that was the case. And I feel like you could push a lot of that to the boomers. Yeah, sure. But that single parent ratio also exploded during the Gen X timeline, too. Most of the millennials I know grew up single parent household. Most of them have Gen X, not baby boomer parents. So when it comes to getting money, I would say, honestly, I think millennials are better in that aspect as far as having it together. They stock portfolios, buying property, starting their own businesses. Granted, it's easier now than it used to be back in the day because we do have the advantage of the Internet. But at the same time, I don't think that that's something that can be taken away from millennials. But if you want to talk about softness, if you want to talk about being overly emotional, then this is just me being non-biased and being real. I do feel like millennials definitely have that problem. I, I so got I a question. That I, 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 got, I got a question for you. Now, people that I said, again, I took the L on millennials being a soft generation. It is a fact, not an opinion, that millennials, on average... <laughs> Especially if you're talking about in the black community, they make more money than Generation X does. So that should simply be, okay, I'll give you that. Y'all out here, you know, y'all more educated. Y'all do invest more, which is also a fact. You know, y'all do invest more. You set yourselves up for the future more. Or you guys do have higher paying jobs at a younger age. I should be given that. But I'm not going to be given that because Generation X can't take accountability for anything. And instead of just giving somebody something, they see it as an L. So they're going to debate me. Let's continue. Hear me. I got a, I got a question for you. Um, when you look at Gen Xers and millennials, would you say more Gen Xers or more millennials are college educated? I would say millennials. So then how could you make how how can you make an assessment about y'all getting to the money more than Gen Xers when Gen Xers for the most part are not college educated? Cause college- now I want y'all to understand before I even answer this question. Angry Man constantly talks about how college education is overrated. You don't need college education to make money. And according to him, if you don't go to school for STEM then you wasted your college degree, which is not true because you could go to law school. All right, you could go. There's a lot of other things you can do that's not in the STEM field. STEM awful is for mathematics too, so you could go into the health field. You could be a doctor. You could be a nurse. There's a lot of other things you could do, right? 
So this whole argument is starting off as disingenuous because he's essentially trying to say the only reason that millennials make more money is because they're college educated, which he on his own has said you don't need a college education to make money. But let's continue. Education doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get to the money. A lot of people who graduate with a college degree don't even get a job in their field. Yeah, why, so yeah, if they why did get you? to the money, they got to the money through their yeah. own entrepreneurship or through their own networking or through their own skills in life. It okay. doesn't necessarily it, have anything to do with the degree. Okay, when it comes to college, when it comes to college, yeah, most people don't get a job in their field, but them having a degree helps them get whatever job they're getting. So, again... Not necessarily. It depends. There's a lot of people with degrees who are working in factories. There's a lot of people with degrees who are working at Target. There's a lot of people with degrees who went into real estate. Real estate, you don't even need a degree for. So, it depends. Like, a college education... So then, so then, basically, so then, basically, what you're saying is you don't necessarily need a college education to get to the money, right? Right. Damn, I got froze here. <laughs> Getting uh, I don't know, yeah, I guess froze. So, so you're you're borging out again, uh, Alex. <sighs> then we're looking at the chat. He's right, AM. Again, it means it means a lot when you can walk into a place and people who aren't your people are agreeing with the stuff that you said. I was cooking right now, so it's annoying <laughs> that my mic cut out here. Because quintessentially what I was going to say to him was, no, that's not what that means. Because there's a lot of people who have a college education who are getting to the back. It's just everyone's not using their college education to get to the back. So to say the only reason we're getting to the bag is because we're more college educated is false. Because a lot of people who are college educated did go off into other fields. Then there's a lot of people who didn't even go and get a college education who still get into the bag. Some people got a trade. Again, as I mentioned in earlier when I was talking, I didn't even bring up college education. I'm missing a lot of people being entrepreneurs. I'm missing a lot of people starting trades. I'm missing a lot of people, you know, like starting businesses and being entrepreneurs, the same thing. But I didn't even bring up college education outside of mentioning that I've been making more money than my mom since college, but let's continue. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. One second, fam. One second, Lowe's. Hey, yo, uh, so the cash app, I mean, the um, the damn uh, super chat, my bad. Uh, Tony07 said, 1999, I understand Gen Xers blame the boomers of why the community is what it is, but does the silent generation have uh, some blame because some did raise the Gen Xers, particularly the younger uh, ones, and was part of the feminist movement. So I, that's the question. But um, let Los get up in here real quick, and then um, you know what I'm saying, my man, uh, my man. And then who are you? Because she paid to get back on. So go ahead, Los. Los. Get- it's funny because Flo with Joe want to say we know Alex isn't getting to the money with that Wi-Fi. <laughs> this is why I like to go on to panels and no one really knows who I am because if Flo with Joe only knew <laughs> Alex is downtown in a place with three damn levels Alex got two cars, Alex got three cell phones Alex is on a MacBook recording right now the only reason there's a problem with Alex's Wi-Fi is because like I said I just heard a good conversation and jumped in I wasn't always set up but trust me when I tell you Flo with Joe Alex got more money than your husband if you got one <laughs> but let's continue been here, man. All right. See, see, what I'm hearing right now is uh, the, the comparison, younger generation. I grew up in that era where you did respect your elders. You know what I'm saying? Re- regardless, it was a crackhead, meth head, whatever you respect, whoever is older. Okay. And- I want y'all to pay attention. Remember what I said earlier? This whole damn debate literally started because they were arguing that you should respect a crackhead. <laughs> Because <laughs> Sway said a lot of Gen X is crackheads, which is true. Which is true. That's another L they didn't want to take. It's just like they blew up the single parent ratio and everyone ran past me saying that. Another L they didn't want to take. Just like a lot of them went to jail. Everyone ran past me saying that. Another L they didn't want to take. But a lot of them were crackheads too. And they were literally arguing we should be listening to crackheads. And Los bringing this up proves that point. I'm going to let them talk for a little bit before we go back to... um. Me and Angry Man going back and forth. I'm going to let him talk for a little bit longer before I skip it. The point I'm saying, just because the person is a crackhead and you see that, does not mean that previously before you met them, they had a life. 
the reason why they probably spit knowledge to you is for the reason is like, young, young man, don't be like me. So I'm going to spit this knowledge to you so you don't follow down to the same path that I am in right now. So you cannot discount what they got going, what they going <laughs> Look at my face. I'm like, bruh, a crackhead? Are you serious right now? <laughs> Let's continue. So yeah, when I, 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 I see people that come through every but Somebody already day, like, go back to the like, conversation y'all skipped because me and Angry Man's conversation was way more interesting than this. With my job. And every time they say something to me, I listen. Nobody said not to respect your elders though. That's the thing. Again, guys, I want y'all to understand, Generation X listens to argue. They don't really listen. No one said don't respect your elders. This conversation literally started because we said, why would we take advice from a crackhead? No one said don't disrespect your elders. No one even said disrespect the crackhead. <laughs> literally, it was just like, why would you take advice from a crackhead? That's what triggered this whole thing. <laughs> Let's continue. Listen, because they went through something previously before we're in the situation they're now. Now, I have the discernment to understand, yo, this person right here tripping. But, you know, and the next person may come through. I have that discernment to understand, but I don't discredit what they going through right now. Previously, yeah, I may look at them like, ah, damn, this person. All right, let's skip forward because he, he ain't talking but about I'm, shit. Let's I'm, skip forward. I'm going to show up at one point in time in my He's life. still talking. They got them. Still talking. Huh? That's cool. You're Still talking. Whole time about crackheads. Don't be like me, young man. Because hey, sometimes... Go ahead, and she just bugged out. Cause now My I'm fault. Hang on, let me go back. He saved... By the Is way, he... Alex, thank, you, thank Israel because he saved you. He saved you. <laughs> he saved your ass. So, Nah, nah, I'm not gonna save him. I'm gonna let you have him. Oh, but you saved him. You saved him. You okay. you interrupted me and let other people. See, see now me and Angry Man about to get back to the real convo here, the real debate. I, I, I just let Sway talk for a little bit because I wanted y'all to understand this really started, legit started, over them arguing that millennials should be listening to crackheads because the crackheads are still elders. This is crazy. But anyway, we about to get back to the real debate. Fucking question. Shit is bugged out because now my I'm fault. I didn't hear you. Shit on my own goddamn channel. Shit is fucking ridiculous. I didn't hear you, bros. Come on, man. Don't do that, man. See, dude, you, you, you stay doing shit, man. You stay doing yeah, shit. Bro. You stay I'm doing shit. I didn't hear you. Look, I'm, I'm like, ask the question now. What's the question? I'm all the way with the shits. <laughs> I'm trying to be fair to other guests. You, yo, bro. You come say on, man. Shit. Bro, come on, fam. You come on. I did not hear you. I was trying to be fair. I was trying to bring the sister up. The the dude came up. I was trying to bring the sister up. I did not hear you talk. I see Jay Pappy waving his hand, saying he want to speak. I was not trying to be rude to you, angry man. I always defer to you. I didn't hear you speaking. So if you would like to speak, you're more to than welcome. We just say and listen to this man repeat himself for fun. Bro, I don't have that. I mean, I'm just trying to be fair to everybody, fam. I'm not talking about you. We said here and listen to Loso repeat himself five minutes uninterrupted. Five minutes uninterrupted. That's why you could pay to boot somebody off if you don't like you what can, they say. You can ask me the question now. <laughs> I'm still like, ask me the question. <laughs> I'm with all the shit. I'm like, not, not ask the question. Ask me the question. Go ahead, Jay Pappy. Go ahead, Angry Man. Go ahead, Angry Man. I appreciate you, Angry Man. I appreciate Look, that. Now, now Jay Pappy wants to smoke. Everybody wants to smoke with me, which I don't. I don't disagree because when, see, the thing is, <laughs> when people see someone that they view a certain way, they want to argue with me. No one was making a good argument for millennials until I came up there. So everybody wants to try to attack my argument. All right. But it's the wrong argument to attack. It's, not, it's, it's the wrong tree to bark up. But Jay Pappy about to take his shot. Let's go. Um, so, so what I wanted to say to Alex, based on what you said about the millennials getting to the money, you got to understand the landscape of the different time periods. How, you, how are you guys getting to the money? You're doing it through tech startups through the internet, through all this online stuff. This is this is the new frontier, the online, the internet. Back in our days, that shit was new to us. 
You guys are building on what was created by the generation before you. That's like me looking back at a World War II veteran or a Vietnam veteran and, and, and telling them that, oh, he's dumb because, you know, he got drafted into the freaking army. Like, no, that was his time period. He he got drafted into the army. He didn't, he didn't, I want you to understand I never said anyone was dumb. This once again goes back to why I said I won this debate in the first eight minutes. Because what did I say in the first eight minutes? I said it's hard to have this conversation because it's just like the debate between men and women. It just turns into a competition. <laughs> it turns into a back and forth. Right? And it turns into, well, I'm better than you. No one's really listening for understanding. I never said Generation X was dumb. I just said millennials are getting to the money more than they are, which is true. But let's continue. Who's to go out there and join the army instead of going out and getting the bag? He was stuck in his time. Everybody is stuck in their time. This is your time. You can't look back at the other period and be like, well, y'all won't get into the money. Like, we was dealing with discrimination. We was dealing with limited access to everything. Angry Man, I remember one time Angry Man was talking about him going to the library and reading the goddamn atlas. Y'all got Google at y'all fingertips. We had to go to the library to get an atlas, yo, to figure stuff out. Y'all y'all had Google. It's right there. So we happy that y'all making money, but you can't be arrogant about it and talking about like, oh, you can't tell me nothing. Like so I never said that you can't tell me nothing. Nor did I ever say that Gen X was broke. I said millennials are getting to the bag more. And if you don't make more money than us, we're not going to listen to you, which we shouldn't, because why the hell would we listen to you about money if you're not making more money than us? That's just dumb. Like, it's like someone who doesn't have a car telling you how to get a car. Someone who doesn't have a house going to tell you how to get a house. It doesn't make any sense. But see, they're taking it as an attack because going back to what I said earlier, Gen X cannot take accountability for anything. So everything you say to them, they take as a personal attack. Again, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. It's like talking to a woman. Anytime you say, oh, a woman do this, woman do that, they be like, well, men do it too. And why are you saying that? And you're sexist. You're misogynist. And all this extra stuff is like, no, I'm just saying one, I'm just saying y'all do this. That's all I'm saying. Well, there was no attack. I purposely said it in a non-confrontational way. You just said your wisdom was outdated. Hold on, Sway. Somebody finally made the point. Hey, hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on real quick. Hold on. Yo. Okay. He said what he said. Who are you was next? Unless Angry Man wants to say something. And then after you, after who are you, you can go Alex if you want to. But Angry Man, do you want to say anything? No, I'm good. All right. Who are you is next? <laughs> Angry Man, tight Thank right you. now. Um, first off, I want to start off and say, Sway, I do apologize for what I said to you earlier, and it was a little disrespectful. Um, also, too, I used to volunteer in our community for at least 20 years, and I'll never forget when I have asked one of these older gentlemen, why is it that you're out here on a corner? What makes you attracted to it? And he told me, he said, this is what he was taught. And he said, right now, I'm trying to teach the youth in order to not be out here on the streets. However, their problem is, is that they don't want to listen. So I asked him, I said, what is it that I can do to help with our community, to help our youth? And he told me, just be out here and try to let them know that there is nothing out here in these streets and to help them to try to get an education. So it's always best to listen to those who have wisdom, no matter what. Okay, now, see, she bringing up education again. I want to point out, guys, I never said education was the reason that millennials were successful. I gave multitude of reasons why millennials are getting to the bag. It's not just education. But let's continue. Can I go after her, please? Well, uh, Alex, oh, Alex, you don't have to Alex, tell me not to be in the streets and not be in the street, I, I, bro. Okay, Sway, you Alex. Don't worry more about Sway, getting off Sway, the Alex is next. Anything. Alex is next, Sway. Go ahead, Alex, and then Quan, and then you can respond, Sway, if you'd like to. Alex Cook session next. coming up. Go ahead, Alex. Here we go. All right, so, um, Jay Papio, let me start with this. Number one, it don't matter that we have the internet or not. First of all, Google is a search engine. It's not a legitimate source of information. So just as much as you can use Google to find good information, it's a lot of bullshit on Google, too. So Google is only as good as you use it. And if you're smart, you don't really use Google like that anyway. 
Because whoever paid the most money going to pop to the top. So a lot of that is just propaganda nonsense. All right? So I want to put that out there. Two, I get what you're saying about the internet, but at the end of the day, we came into the internet, we learned the internet, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to adapt to the times that you're in. There's a lot of Gen X who wouldn't be as financially successful as they are right now if it wasn't for the internet. It's Bingo! The, ironic, the, the irony of a bunch of Gen Xers who literally make their money off of the internet minimizing the accomplishments of millennials because we have that same internet that they literally have made their money off of is insane. The cognitive dissonance in that is insane. But I ain't got to add much because I'm already cooking. So let's continue. ...who didn't use the internet. No, I'm not implying that most of them got it through the internet, but a lot of them got it through the internet. A lot of them are who they are without the internet. So yeah, we had more time with it. We did have an advantage in that front. But y'all also have more time with other things, right? Like my uncle, for example, going back to what Angry Man has said earlier, he used to work in a factory. And he was making damn near six figures in that factory. Now, the factory got shut down, but he didn't say, he didn't invest. He didn't set himself up for future. He just sat on that money he was making, right? Now, he could have put himself in a place to be in a better position had he been reinvesting his funds, but he chose not to do that. Millennials at a high ratio reinvest their funds, at a higher ratio than Gen X. So that doesn't have anything to do with the internet. That's just moving the right way. That's adapting to your situation. That would be like saying, oh, we can't say Steph Curry is better than any point guard who played before him because he got the three-point line. The three-point line, there he learned how to shoot. And I want to point out how Matic P is making a good point. First of all, he said older dudes create the internet, which is facts. (laughs) Second of all, he said Bill Gates and all them other dudes are older, which is facts. Bill Gates... Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, most of these cats is way older than millennials. So I, it doesn't make sense to downplay millennial accomplishments because, oh, well, y'all had the internet. Again, when half the people on the panel are making their money literally off the internet. If it wasn't for the internet, a lot of these cats on the panel wouldn't have nothing. I'm not going to say nothing literally. I'm sure they would have figured out how to feed their families, but they damn sure wouldn't have an abundance of wealth. So you, you can't use the internet as an excuse because at the end of the day, if you have no talent, the internet ain't going to do nothing for you. Nah, he makes the three-point shot, he makes the three-point shot. You <laughs> can't take away from the man because he's using the three-point line. So I don't really see where that argument or what that argument really has mean, to do with anything. You mean Ben Basketball? You um, mean Ben Basketball? Play? Bro, one my... He's oh, yeah, very, very important. Alex, wait. This is very important because it's probably not what he said. Alex, let me ask you something. When you say that millennials are reinvesting their money, very simply, can you tell me what tool are they using to reinvest their money? I mean, it's multiple tools. Internet. The only reason I'm saying it's multiple tools is because I work. See, he wants to say the internet again. We're having this panel on the internet. Little podcast makes his money off of the internet. The angry man makes his money off of the internet. Israel is making money hosting this panel right now on the damn internet. So to make the argument, oh, it's the internet, is crazy. Also, so way going to say off the internet. That's not true. I work as a financial consultant. If you meet with me to set up your investments, which 90% of people meet with agents or consultants when they're dealing with their money, they do not use the internet. People don't just take their money and plug it into an automated AI tool that invests their funds for them. They don't. They sit down and meet with a human being who tells them what to put their money in. Hence why I said that there's multiple methods. See, they just think about Robinhood and like cryptocurrency apps like um, Coinbase and stuff like that. They're not thinking about the human aspect, but because I work as a financial consultant, I'm thinking about the human aspect and how many clients I have who meet with me physically and we talk in real time about what to put their money in. So for them to just be like, oh, they're using the internet, that's just ingenuous. It's literally not true. But let's continue. So they're telling me, oh, most of the people you work with are going to have to be 40, 50 something years old. Most of my clients are under the age of 40 years old. Most of my clients are millennials. So you're using multiple tools. I mean, if you wanted to say the internet, you could say the internet, because I'm pretty sure that's what you were trying to lead up to, but it's not just the internet. But I'll give you that. Okay. That's not the point, Alex. Alex, that's not the point. That is the point. (laughs) Your your argument is the only reason they're invested is because of the internet. If that was the case, financial consultants still wouldn't be a booming six-figure business. That's not true. But let's continue. 
my, the point is this: in general, right? You can't. You you've been doing this all night, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but your anecdotal experience does not speak for the generality or the totality of what's going on with any of the generations or our race in specific. So you have to just be honest and genuine in the conversation. You know for a fact that the reason why millennials are investing more is because the tools to invest is literally in their palms. All of the That's not true. <laughs> that's, not, that's what you want to be true to fix your argument. That's not true. And it's also funny that he's like, you've been using anecdotal evidence all night. No, I have not. Millennials do make more at a younger age than Generation X does. That's a fact. That's not anecdotal. They're more educated. That's a fact. That's not anecdotal. They invest more. That's a fact. That is not anecdotal. You know what is anecdotal evidence? That millennials are soft. Going back to what I said earlier, this is why I said everything's going to string together. There is no statistical fact or bearing or backing that you can find that would say millennials are soft. That is an opinion. But they all agreed. No one disagreed with that. That's anecdotal evidence. I'm saying from what I've witnessed, I would agree that they're soft. Nothing else I've said is anecdotal evidence. You just don't agree with it. <laughs> That's why you're saying that. But let's continue. Because I, I got to cook up for him too. It's literally in their palms. They don't have to go anywhere to go search for it. That's the point that Pappy was trying to make. When my mom then was going to college, I don't even know how any of them graduated without the internet. There's no way. Traveling all the way around town, trying to find one book, having to go to six different libraries to do it and all of that. Man, please. The, 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 when I got into college in 2011, I'm like, bro, I don't know how y'all doing this about the internet. I literally aced every exam. Anything I had to write an essay on, I got an A on. Why? Because I learned how to cheat. <laughs> right? So, and that was based on having the internet, right? I was just really good at it, right? So what I'm saying is you it's okay to I'm not saying don't boost up millennials, I celebrate them. I'm one of those people who say, bro, they get into the bag and they ain't doing it illegally. I got young somebody guys. said, so if you had the knowledge of where to go, you would choose not to go because you have to leave the house. This is what I'm talking about. Excuses. Somebody else said in the chat, what about Bill Gates and all the other tech billionaires? Excuses. I told you at the beginning, this is why I said I won the debate in the first eight minutes. No matter what you say, Generation X is going to have an excuse. It's completely disingenuous to act like, oh, people are only investing because they have the internet. They don't even know what the hell they're investing in. The vast majority of people who make investments still use financial consultants. They still use accountants. They still use financial advisors. To argue against that is complete bullshit. Like I said, it wouldn't still be a six-figure career if that was not the case. But let's continue. Dogs, sell weed, rent, rent out luxury vehicles. They got all type of stuff that they do legally. Legally. And then will work four, six, seven months out of the year doing stuff like iron working. And construction make sixty, seventy thousand dollars that way. You see what I'm saying? So they have legal ways, and they have created multiple streams of income for themselves. But if you're gonna talk about what they're doing with the investing, you just got to be honest about the reason why they invest more, bro. So hey, yo, somebody else. That's not a negative thing though, because the tech advance doesn't mean it's easier. Society is dumber than ever with the damn advanced technology, which is a fact. This is a goofy. Argument. The only reason they're bringing up the internet is because they don't want to just take the L. Which proves what I said earlier. But like I said, I got a cook up for him coming. Hey, yo, wait, hold on, fam. Quan, Quan is next. Before Thank you for that. Uh, here, no doubt. Thank Quan you. is next. Go, go ahead, Quan. Hey, listen. I'm going to say this. I'm not letting y'all get away with this this crackhead mess. If we... No, 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 no. <laughs> nah, he done went back to the crackhead conversation. Women should not follow... Millennials get into the bag. Got a the internet is the new wave. See, I'm winning the chat. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not supposed to win this chat. I'm a, a Generation X panel full of Generation Xers. Everyone's against me. And a chat that's full of Generation Xers. And I'm still getting support. Alex is Mr. Let Go's little brother. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> but... Let's, let's, let's continue. I'm probably going to skip ahead of what Quan's saying because he's getting off the root of the conversation going back to that crackhead thing and we don't really care about that. We don't want women following them. Why are we getting on this internet and giving value to crackheads? <laughs> and people that say, <laughs> we don't want women to follow behind prostitutes who we can say have experience. 
We can say that they have knowledge. That's the problem. Why we keep giving the microphone to people <laughs> who do not represent what we want to look, what we want to look forward to. No, if you sell cigarettes and you sitting up on the internet pretending like you, 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 Dr. Martin Luther, whatever, I'm not listening to you, fam. This, no. this, this, this is a disingenuous argument. One mic, one mic. As soon as Angry Man start talking, y'all start talking over him. I, one I one mic. Silence. 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 Dick Rock. <sighs> Told you. Shit. Y'all, y'all, you can't even get a word out of his mouth. Everybody start fucking talking. You said I was out the corner, but that's fine. Yo, let the man talk. Go ahead, Sway. Nah, you want go ahead, Angry Man. I put him down. Go ahead. Mm -mm, go ahead. Let Sway go. I'm chilling. Because it, it's making my point. I'm chilling. Making my fucking point. Y'all talking all this shit about how y'all don't want to listen to crackheads, but you don't listen to niggas that do know what the fuck they talking about. Because every goddamn time I go to open my motherfucking mouth, somebody interrupt me. And then when I get mad about it, niggas want to get mad at me because I'm mad I got fucking interrupted on my own goddamn channel. Uh, angry man's about to have an emotional spurt. <laughs> Look out, y'all. Shit is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Ask the man a simple goddamn question. His mic started fucking up so he couldn't answer. So niggas immediately dive in and start talking. But I'm not supposed to be upset about that. So we going back to that question he want to ask me because he think he got me. He about to get a surprise, though. Let's continue. Question was hey, simple. Man, you can still ask me the question, man. I'm more than willing to answer the question. The question was simple. All right, what's the question? Were you saying that having a degree does not necessarily mean you don't, you're going to get money because you have a degree? Absolutely. It doesn't mean you're going to get money because you got a degree. So then, so then if most of the millennials are college graduates and you're saying that most of the millennials ain't even using their degree to go into the field that they went into, you're basically just telling me that all of the millennials that did that wasted fucking money. No. So, hold on, let me explain this. First of all, when I say... Wait, 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 she's like, what? They didn't? Watch this cook up are getting to the bag i didn't say it was because of a college degree bingo i said millennials are getting to the bag i said they're on the entrepreneurship wave i said <laughs> they're starting businesses they're getting cdls they're investing i didn't say anything about college degrees the reason they want to angle this conversation towards college degrees is because then they can use their talking points but as he's about to find out the talking points don't work on me let's continue Said that millennials was getting to the back. I don't know where the whole oh because of a college degree came from. Yes, millennials are educated, but actually when it was brought up, oh, it's because they got an education. I said not necessarily because half of the people who have a degree aren't necessarily using or working in a field where their degree comes from. Because so I, I'm not going to say most of them wasted it. I'd say about half of them wasted. Some of them took stupid things to go to school for. Like I watched it happen. One of my friends went to school for art. I was like, yo, why would you go to school for art? It's nothing wrong with art, but if you're nice at art, just go and be an entrepreneur and do your art thing. Work on your networking skills, things like that. There's no reason to pay for a degree for that. Let's, so listen I, I just want to put that out there. Did they all raise their degrees? No. Some of them are out here getting money Alex, because of their degree. Well, Alex, some of them Alex, got a degree. Alex, and got Alex. Yo, Alex, hold on. Let them rebut. God damn, my nigga. Let them rebut. Let them I was just about to stop. I nah, no, but fam, you everybody. keep going on and on, my, my G. You keep okay. going on. Let them get a word in edgewise, fam. Go ahead, angry man. Shit. I asked you, do millennials, or there more millennials with college degrees than Gen Xers? You said you would say millennials have more college degrees. I said, how can you make the argument that millennials are getting to the bag in a way that's better then the Gen Xers, if Gen Xers, for the most part, are not really college educated, not a lot of us. You said to to deflect from that, you said that most millennials don't even use their college degree in the field that they go into. I then are you talking about what I deflected from this whole entire conversation is disingenuous in the deflection because I never said that millennials have more money because of college. 
But watch this cook up. Watch this. Said, well, it doesn't matter if they go into a particular field. What helps them is the fact that they have a college degree, which is a fact. But you said no, not necessarily. So the logic that I'm trying to break down is if millennials are going to college to get degrees, racking up student loan debt for a degree that they're not going to fucking use. It goes right back to my point and Miss Orissa's point that y'all are bad with fucking money. Right What's say you, Alex? What say you, Alex? Thanks. Okay. Wait, hold on. Got- look, 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 look. They think he got me. Watch this cook up. Watch this. This is about to be a legendary cook up. Somebody timestamp this for me. Respond. Go ahead, Alex. You got the floor. Okay, so when I said millennials were getting to the bag, right? I'm not going to call this a deflection, but you said, would you say more millennials have degrees than Gen X? I said yes. Then you asked me, you said, well, do you think that plays a part? I said not necessarily. The only reason I said I'm not going to call it a deflection because that's exactly what the hell it was is because I know if I call it a deflection, they're just going to talk over me and try to use that as an excuse to kick me off the panel. So I'm like, nah, I'm about to cook. So I'm going to leverage this so I get to get my cook up. That's the only reason I didn't call him out for deflecting. This whole entire conversation is a deflection because I literally never said that it was because of college. But watch this cook up. Because they aren't all using their degrees. I get the logic that you're trying to make. Okay. But I never said that millennials were getting to the bag in the first place because of those degrees, which was all I was saying. I didn't say millennials are more educated. That's why they're making more money. Now, if you're asking me the question of do I feel like most of them wasted that? No, I feel like half of them did. Yes, half then of them me, did. Yes, they me, took them degrees. But millennials were pushed into getting college degrees. From the time then we were me, in high school, they were like, go to college. We weren't told you were basically a loser or you weren't going to be able to do anything if you did not go to college, which oversaturated me, the amount of people who have degrees, which is why all facts. these people with degrees aren't working in their field. All Everybody facts. Everybody has a degree now. Now you need like a master's degree. Now you need like a degree and a skill, which leads back to why I said Half of them went to school for goofy stuff. They probably would have never went to school for that goofy stuff if they weren't being pushed in to getting a degree. I get what you. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with what you're All saying. Right, I'm Sam, saying my original stop. point when I Alex, said money wasn't Alex, because of degrees. Alex, look, 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 look. Now they're gonna stop me because I'm cooking. <laughs> now they're gonna stop me because I'm cooking. Look, look at the chat. Look at the chat. Look, Alex is a smart brother. I can't agree with Alex on that part. This is facts. The only reason you see so many millennials with degrees that they're not using is because we got pushed into going to college. That's the only reason. Just like Gen X got pushed into the damn factory that angry man keeps bringing up. That's why when everything went to college degrees and you started having to have degrees, they got left behind. The reason you have so many millennials with useless degrees is because we were told we had to go to college or we were not going to get a job. But everyone's degree isn't useless. I'm not going to say everyone's degree is useless when I know a whole bunch of damn doctors. I know a whole bunch of damn lawyers. I know CDOs in real life making way money, more money than a lot of these cats as YouTube is making. So I'm not going to say everyone's degree is useless. That's stupid. But I will say about half of them probably got a useless degree because they were pushed to college when that's not really what they wanted to do and never really where they wanted to go. Now I'm going to get cut off because you ain't supposed to be smarter than a damn host. <laughs> Gee, you got to cut it off at some point, fam. You, you made your point. You got to, like, let somebody else get in there, brother. I, I hear you. You're cooking. But let them get back in there, okay? You're doing good, Alex. It's just, you got to cut it off. Go ahead, Angry Man. Look. Now, nah, let him cook. I agree. Let the man cook. He saved Angry Man on that. Let me cook. For one thing... If we're gonna, if we, if you're gonna do that, then let's clarify. Then what is the reason that millennials? What is the if it, if it's not? Wow, really, Israel? Let the man talk. Is yeah, they don't want to let me talk because I was just supposed to be checkmated right there. And it ain't happened because first of all, you put words in my mouth. I never said that was because of college degrees. Second of all, like I said, the only reason you have so many millennials with degrees that they're not using is because they never wanted to go to college in the first place. But they, we were all pushed there. Again, just like Gen X was pushed in that factory. So what are we really talking about here? But let's continue. They have more access to college if, because that's part of the reason. Part of the reason that millennials have access. I like Alex. See, again, 
It says more when you can go to someone else's realm and still gain their support for your points than when you do it in your own realm. Well, you can step into the lion's den. This is why I like going on other people's panels and not even saying who I am and just going. Because when you can step into the lion's den and get support, that means what you're talking ain't bullshit. That means what you're talking can survive anything. You don't need an echo chamber. I can go anywhere with my points and they're still going to stick because I don't say nothing but facts. And I honestly feel like I'm the most balanced person on YouTube. That's why I came in and took an L. They still ain't taking an L. I'm still arguing with four different people because they don't want to take the L. It's crazy. <laughs> Let's continue college is because of the people that came before them that actually got it Alex speaking facts though put them through college the reason why a lot of us didn't go to college because our fucking boomers didn't put us through college this is a lie too generation x is not putting millennials through college millennials are going to college and taking out student plus loans i had to take out a student plus loan because God bless my mom, she couldn't afford to put me to college. It's too damn high. So I had to take out a student plus loan and put my goddamn self through college. My sister got a scholarship. That's how she got through college. Most of my friends took out student plus loans. That's why we're in so much debt. You can't on one hand say, oh, we're in all this debt because we're going to college. And then on the other hand, say the only reason we went to college is because Gen X paid for us to go to college. That's bullshit. If Gen X paid for us to go to college, we wouldn't be in college debt. No one paid for us to go to college. We took our own student loans because we were told if we did not go to college, we wouldn't be able to get a damn job. And half the people didn't want to do something that required a college degree. They didn't even really want to go to college. They got forced. Hence why half of them ain't working in a field because they never want to do that in the first goddamn place. But this is what I'm saying. It's a contradiction. You cannot say, oh, well, y'all got the most college debt and then turn around and be like, oh, well, y'all are only able to go to college because Gen X was paying for it. Gen X was not paying for it. We paid for the college our goddamn selves. Somebody said cook in increments. Nah, man, let me cook. <laughs> so again, this is going back to Gen Xers doing more for the generations below them than the boomers did for us, right? So, since you want to say that... That's not, not facts. A, because they didn't pay for us to go to school. That's why we have the most student loan debt. They're arguing against their own argument right now. <laughs> like, literally. It's hilarious to listen to. College degree, right? Because you brought up college. You said you're making more money. You're making more money right out of college than your mom made. That's what you said. That's what you said. Podcast, did you catch that? I caught it. Okay, so... Look at this dick right there. I caught it. <laughs> now watch this. Look, angry man think he got me again. Watch this cook up. I'm about to cook up again. Watch this. The reason why I brought up the college degree is because you brought up college. Now, if you're telling me that college is not the reason that millennials are getting to the bag, then give me the reason that they're getting to the bag differently. Excuse me. Give me the reason. Let me be concise. Give me the reason that they're getting to the bag that Gen Xers are not utilizing or didn't utilize. Hell to a different standard. Different Okay, so when I said I've been making more money than my mom, I said since college. Mm -hmm. I don't work in my field. I was a financial consultant. So I just went out and got a skill because I realized after college that I didn't want to do the office thing. But I can understand how that got misconstrued because I did say I've been making more money than my mom since college. But college so nice try. <laughs> now, if y'all go back and listen, I literally said I've been making more money than my mom since college. I never said that it was because of my college degree, as I just explained. Nice try, but you're gonna have to try again. <laughs> gonna have to try again. Wasn't the reason. Now, as far as where millennials are getting money from, millennials are starting businesses at a higher ratio. I already acknowledge that we have been utilizing the internet to our advantage. I never said that we didn't utilize the internet to our advantage. Oh. Now, these are the things I actually said. I literally said, oh, they're using the internet. That's how they're getting to the money. I said they're starting their own businesses and startups. That's how they're getting to the money. I mentioned trades. That's how they're getting the money. I said all these things before. But this is what happens when you listen to argue and you don't just listen. I never said that none of us utilized our college degrees to our advantage. But a lot of us actually went out and got trades, too. A lot of millennials have CDLs. A lot of millennials went out and got welding. 
a lot of millennials went out and got, you know, became aestheticians or whatever the case may be. A lot of them, like you were saying earlier, went out, got print press businesses, started opening their own stuff. Like when I started off financial consulting, I worked for IT certs. A lot of people are getting certifications. Now I do it on my own. I run it through my own. Shout book. out to the chat. Chat. Look, imperfect woman of God. Yeah, some, not all. Exactly. See, everybody wants to deal in absolutes because absolutes make it easy to win an argument. But when you have someone who's balanced, who acknowledges the size of everything, you can't get me with the absolute shit because I'm don't, I don't not going to speak in the absolute unless we're talking about a specific statistic. So there's multiple levels of why millennials are getting to the money. Some of them are using the gig economy, which technically, if you wanted to, you could call that the Internet. It's not necessarily, but you could if you wanted to say the gig economy is the Internet. Like I wouldn't take the, to me. I don't want to squabble over stuff like that. If you wanted to call that the Internet, you could call that the Internet. Right. But there's multiple levels to where millennials are getting the money from. But then, like I said, so, a lot of Gen X so are still you, using the Internet. So if you, so. Exactly. A lot of Gen Xers are... Using the money too. <laughs> I repeat, a lot of Gen Xers are using the internet too. This is a disingenuous. You want to talk about disingenuous arguments? It is a disingenuous argument for a panel full of Gen X YouTubers to be using the internet to downplay how millennials are making money. Because that's how they're making money. This is stupid. <laughs> but let's continue. Me. So then, let me ask you this question. And then, hold on real quick, Angry Man. After you ask the question, I got to read the Super Chats. You know what I'm saying? Because people have been hitting Super Chats and we've been ignoring them. So after that, after you ask them the question, let me read the Super Chat and then give them a chance to answer, okay? Go ahead, fam. So if you were, if you, if you grew up in a era where we still had factories, um, manufacturing plants or all that... Do you think you would be doing what you're doing right now? Do you think you would be working in one of those places? Israel, you want to read the super chats first? I know you say you want nah, to read the you, chats. If, if I respond. Them, can you, you can give them a simple yes or no answer first, and then I'll read the super chats. All right. Yes. Okay. okay. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to what just happened. Angry man said, "If you grew up in an air, all right, somebody timestamp this for me." If you grew up in an era where factories and power plants and things of that nature existed, would you still be doing what you're doing now? I said yes, as in I would still be doing what I'm doing right now, which is working as a financial consultant. Now, I'm not going to go. They're already telling me that I'm talking too much. So I wasn't going to go into how I have a movie on Amazon. So I'm a movie producer as well. And the various other things that I do. I'm just going to stick on financial consultant, right? Now, that's important because watch what he's going to do. See, Gina said no because she sees what Angry Man was trying to set me up for. But the reason she said no is because the only way what Angry Man asked me works is if I would have said no, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. I'd be working in the factory, but I would not be working in the damn factory. But let's continue. And then I'll let you rock after that. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, shout out to Eric. Any millennial out there? I'll read it for you. So I'll read it for you. Is shout out to Eric for the ten dollar podcast. Hold on, fam. God I'm damn. I'm gonna read it for you. I don't need you to read it for me, fam. Okay, well, forget you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna give you some box on your show. Forget you then, chump. I'll be quiet. I'll be a chump. This is why Wu Tang broke up. And I don't, it, hey, and I got a lot of things to say about Chicago too, but I ain't gonna say them right now on this show. Any millennials out there that want to be a real millennial, stay a star and won't have to worry about the boomer Gen X trying to be all in their videos, all on the panels dancing. Come to death row. <laughs> now you see why I want to <laughs> All right, we're not going to stick around for reading the Super Chats because it's pointless. Hang on real quick. We're going to skip forward. Uh, one more. All right. Says Tampon Daniels. All right. Oh, one more. The Broad Street Bully, but he was a dead. 
that's that's the reason why he got to give everybody. Take another book. I want him to read the super chat. Uh, beans, beans, my sigma brother. I know you feel my pain. Let's let's say another motherfucking. Go back. Beans got a sigma. He's a gamma. <laughs> so what? We still had that sort of industrial type economy. Would you be working in one of those places, right? Hang on, go back to this. Had that sort of in how you made my point. You made my point for me, bro. You made my point for me, and I'm gonna show you how you made my point. The moment I asked you if we still had now watch this cook up. This is about to be another legendary cook up because he think he got me again. Not so. Sort of industrial type economy. Would you be working in one of those places, right? That means that if you were, if right now we had all of that and it was to just go away, you would have none of the skills that you have right now and you would have to figure it out, which would make life really difficult for you. So Gen Xers had that exact scenario. So the reason why a lot of Gen Xers didn't go to college, reason why a lot of Gen Xers didn't start businesses, the reason why Gen Xers didn't try to be entrepreneurs is because they didn't have to. When, when most Gen Xers, by the time they start getting rid of all of these jobs that most men had that were manual labor jobs, it was almost time for uh, uh, millennials to be there. You see what I'm saying? It was almost time for millennials. So a lot of us Gen Xers that were 80s babies, we were on the ass end of the industrial uh, uh, economy. So when they took all of those jobs away, now all of a sudden... You have black men that don't have college degrees, that don't have marketable skills, that don't have anything that they can utilize to make money because all of the skills they had, you know, uh, working printing presses and, and, and uh, forklift operators and stuff, they, they didn't have an abundance of those jobs. They had to run around and try to find places where they could do those jobs and the competition is higher because it's less of those jobs around. So the point that I'm trying to make to you is that as a millennial, there's a lot that you can brag about when it comes to getting to the bag, when it comes to getting to the paper. But the only way you can brag about it is because of the advantages that you have that the Gen Xers didn't have. Like the internet that you're using. Okay. Now watch this cook up. <laughs> because he was just being disingenuous because he's, he basically tried to frame it like what he said was... <laughs> If you had access to the industrial jobs and factories, would you go and work there, yes or no? And I said, yes. That's not what he said. What he said was, if you had access to the industrial jobs and factories and industries, would you still be doing what you're doing now? And that's what I said yes to. I'm glad I listened to this on the playback because now I know I'm not crazy. That's not what he said. So he tried to trick bag me into him being right. And they've been doing that the whole night, been putting words in my mouth and saying that I said shit I didn't say so that their talking points will stick. And it's like, I'm not about to allow that to happen, but let's continue. So when you asked me that question, maybe I interpreted it wrong or maybe we just miscommunicated with each other. We didn't. I, he was just being disingenuous now that I'm listening back to it, but let's continue because I'm about to cook up. That question is, if you were back in the Generation X time period and those factory jobs were available... Would you still be doing what you're doing now? And that's why I said yes. I didn't take the question as if you were working back then and those jobs were available, would you work those jobs instead of doing what you're doing now? Because no, I would have done the same thing. To be a financial no. consultant, that's a skill. So you still no. could have got that in Generation X. No, what I asked you, no, we had, of course, we had financial consultants back then. We had entrepreneurs, businessmen, all of that. What I asked you specifically, I said, if those type of jobs were available now, would you be doing what you're doing now or would you be working at one of those jobs? You said that you'd be you said, yes, you'd be working at one of those jobs. That's not what I said. He even just repeated it again. I asked you. If those jobs were available now, would you be doing what you're doing now or would you be working at one of those jobs? I said yes, as in I would be doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> so this is clearly just a miscommunication thing somehow. But I didn't answer the question the wrong way. He said, would you still be doing what you're doing now? I said yes. He just said it again. <laughs> it's funny listening back to it, but whatever. 
that's what I that's was. That's why I said there, that, that's my fault. That was a miscommunication on my part. I thought you said, would you still be doing what you're doing now? That's why I said yes. Because so the reason think, I stopped accounting is because I didn't like working in the office. I misunderstood that. That's on me. So what you're telling me, so let's let's take it off of you for a second and let's put it in general. So what you're telling <laughs> Because I would not stop being the financial consultant to work in a fucking factory and break my body down by the time I'm 40, 50 years old and can't even break my wife's back no more because the job done broke my damn back. Why the hell would I want to do that? <laughs> I can use my oral skills and make money and stay in good financial health. I mean, good physical health, not financial health. I have my feet and limbs working and be able to dick my woman down. Why would I want to go and break my back at a job? No, I would not do that. That's stupid. When you have the ability to do something else. And as he just acknowledged, I could have did this back then. So why would I change it now? It makes no sense. But let's continue. For his argument to work, he needed me to answer that with yes. That's why now he's going to say, let's take you out of it. But watch this cook up. Me is that if we look at all the millennials that work the gig economy, that become entrepreneurs, that start businesses, or all of that, things that they've had to do, things that they have been forced into doing to adapt to the economy. If we took all of them right now and there were still a bunch of factories, warehouses, manufacturing plants, do you really think there would be as many millennials doing what they're doing now? Or do you think those millennials would be working at those factories? As someone who worked in a factory when I was younger and seen how many millennials quit, I don't think they were working in a factory. But that goes back to them being soft, like I admitted earlier. That's just me being honest with you. I see millennials quit factory jobs all the time. They don't want to work 10 to 12 hours. So, they don't like lifting heavy equipment. And they're soft mentally. You got to be so, strong so mentally me, to work so those types me, of jobs. Me, That's me, me giving Gen X props. Because so, so I feel just, like y'all are mentally strong. So let me just... See, see how I just checkmated him with that? You can't tell me that millennials are soft and lazy. Which was his beginning argument that millennials are soft and lazy. And then turn around and tell me that those same soft and lazy millennials are going to go into the goddamn factory... And lift up heavy ass machinery and work 10 to 14 hours a fucking day. Overworking the gig economy, overusing the internet, over getting a degree, over getting IT shirts, over getting CDLs, over becoming financial consultants, over doing the various things that we can do now. Starting online businesses and all that. They're going to go to a fucking factory. No, they would not go to a factory. They don't stay in factories now. Amazon hires and fires like 500 people a month. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, and the two things, like I said, and the reason I said ask me giving Gen X props is because I wanna, I'm want i continuously doing what I'm doing here to show you guys that they can't take it out. I told Angry Man it was my mistake. I misunderstood him when really he was just wrong just to see if he would admit that he was wrong. Of course he didn't. I even said, no, millennials are soft and lazy and mentally weak. Remember, that's supposed to be what we were taken as fact to give Gen X props. So now you're telling me that's not the truth? Now you're telling me if there were factories, these soft-ass, weak-ass, lazy-ass millennials going to go and work in them damn factories for 10 to 14 hours a day? No, the hell they would not. They wouldn't. Try again, but let's continue. You just ask Beans this, and then you know, somebody else can have it. <laughs> Beans, did you just hear the disingenuousness of that answer? There was nothing disingenuous about that answer at all. <laughs> See, whenever you don't say what they want you to say, they say you're being disingenuous. It's ridiculous. Stati you can look up the turnover rate of factories right now and see that I'm telling the truth and I said millennials are not going to stay in the damn factory job. They don't stay in them now. Go ask Jeff Bezos if he can keep employees. He'll tell you no. I did. <laughs> I did hear it, but at the end, he kind of cleaned it up. But at the beginning, yeah. He cleaned it up at the end. He did, but it like didn't matter. That's I, end, I, did. I didn't clean it up at the end. Y'all, see, this is what I'm talking about. Listening to argue versus listening to understand. They heard, no, they wouldn't. And they automatically say, oh, that's ingenious. That's not true. But then when I said, well, millennials are supposed to be mentally soft and weak and lazy, right? So therefore, why would we think they're going to do that? See, now they have to backpedal off that point and say, oh, okay, you cleaned it up at the end. <laughs> because you can't say, if you're saying I'm being disingenuous about that, then that would mean you were being disingenuous when you said that millennials were lazy, when you said that millennials <laughs> don't like the work, and they're weak, mentally and physically. 
you will have to take that L. And since Generation X, as I stated at the beginning of the video when I had already won the debate, doesn't want to take an L on any goddamn thing, they can't do that. So instead of calling me disingenuous, they're like, ah, we're going to take it back and say you cleaned it up at the end. I didn't clean it up at the end. What I did to them was what he was trying to do to me, which is use what they stated against them. You said that millennials were lazy and mentally weak. There's no way a lazy, mentally weak, physically weak person is going to survive in a damn factory. As dangerous as the factory is, as much hard work as that is, as heavy as that equipment is, they aren't going to do it. Those two things can't exist at once. But what they're doing is hedging their baits. Oh, you were being disingenuous, but you cleaned it up at the end. Nah, you didn't expect me to say what I said at the end. So now you got to say I cleaned it up when the reality is I was right all along. Y'all tried to jump in before I could finish my point. That's why Ish kept trying to shut me up earlier. <laughs> if you guys pay attention, the reason that I keep repeating what I'm saying versus just being quiet is because these dudes are purposely misunderstanding what I'm saying and putting words in my mouth constantly. There was nothing disingenuous about what I said. But let's continue. I mean, and that's what I was going to say. Like, so look at it this way. Because what, what we do a lot of times when we want to make a point is we will take the best of something, no matter how small the percentage is, and then compare it to the worst of something, right? So what you're doing is you're comparing... Look, Curtis, I mean, can't Trout just brought the exact point I've been making. Gen X be like, if I would have had the same advantages millennials have, why be successful for the same advantages millennials have? This whole entire argument is disingenuous because y'all argue millennials are only successful because of the internet while you're making money on the internet. If you're going to make that argument, at least be doing something besides YouTube. This is, this is goofy. And they really don't see it. I've mentioned it at this point three times. Like, y'all making money off the internet too. And they just run past it like it wasn't said. But I'm the one being disingenuous. But let's continue. Successful millennials to the worst off Gen Xers, right? Because according to a, uh, a report, uh, an article I read on the Insider, millennials only make six thousand dollars more on average, right? <laughs> so it's not like they're making a whole bunch more money in general. Did I say they was making a whole bunch more money, or did I say they were making more money? So what does, well, they only make 6000 more on average. They're making more. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Millennials are younger than Generation X. It's also a fact, not anecdotal. I've been speaking facts all night, but they're trying to do whatever they can do to discredit me, but it's not damn working because the non-biased people in the chat see the facts that I'm dropping. Let me drop another fact right now. The older you get, the more you get promoted, the higher your position goes. The more hierarchy you have in the company, the more money you make. You accumulate raises. Again, you get promotions. You have more hierarchy in the company. So you get the best benefits the faster. You get to the upgrades the fastest. Built to the fact that Generation X is older than millennials, we should not on average be making $6,000 more than them. Because they have higher positions and they've been working longer for than we have. So they should be sitting higher in their companies as managers, regional vice presidents, etc. than we are, as we should still be working our way up. So they should still be making more money than us, regardless of inflation. That's a fact. But let's continue it. Kicker, things cost just as much more. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It, the, there are a lot of you that are into tech into um i'll put you like this there are a lot more of you at your current ages who are setting yourselves up for your futures than we did but currently why not just say that and take the l <laughs> again it goes back to what i said earlier they refuse to take an l instead of just saying alex you're right we got an hour-long argument trying to figure out how i'm somehow not right when i am right <laughs> literally when i'm right but they don't want to just say that I'm right because they can't be wrong. Which goes back to what I said at the beginning of the video. When you debate with Generation X, it's like arguing with women and children. They will not take accountability. They cannot be wrong for anything. They can't. This is proving my point. It's not like y'all just out here on average making $80,000. That's not happening. Did I say that? Nope. Y'all uh, so. still make average money just like everybody else. 
Anything yeah, I said? So can, can I say this really fast? And then the next person can speak. I just want to say this really quick. Okay. So this is turning into what I was talking about when I first came up. I try to keep everything balanced, right? So when I said millennials make more, that's just a fact. I never said it was a lot more. I just said millennials were getting to the back. Just like when we're like, oh, millennials have more degrees. Yeah, millennials do have more degrees. Even when I was talking about investing and setting themselves up for the future, these, these are just things that we do, right? And then it's like, oh, you have the internet. That's why you do. Okay, but I'm just telling you what we do. To me, when it comes to money, I feel like my generation is very good at money. They are very good at <laughs> entrepreneurship. They're very good at getting to the back. They're not doing it. Now, I, know, I brought up Stop. statistics to back that up what I was saying. But I also... Look, all I'm saying, no, but nobody has proven me wrong. He just... Here's what's funny about this. This is the, dis this is the cognitive dissonance you're dealing with when you're dealing with Generation X. And they don't even realize it. He just said millennials, our average, make 6000 more than Generation X. I just explained to you guys that despite inflation, it still shouldn't be that way because Generation X has more seniority than we do, which means they should be in higher positions at their job due to being there longer. They should have accumulated more raises and should have accumulated more benefits. So we should not be making $6,000 more than my average, regardless of inflation. He just admitted that we are, and they're sitting here shaking their heads, still saying that it's not true that we make more money than them. It's a fact at this point. He just admitted it. You see the kind of the dissonance? It's like, it's like sign language. Shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. That's all they do. <laughs> and again, I came in, took the L, I said, okay, millennials are soft, and they're, a little, they're mentally weak. No statistics to back that up. I just gave them that. They refused to give me a point. Podcast just admitted that I'm right and then tried to make an excuse for why I was right, which is what I told y'all they do. Instead of just taking the L, there's always an excuse for the L or an explanation. Instead of just taking the L, then you have the other half of the panel acting like it's not true when the man just gave the statistics that prove that it is. The cognitive dissonance is real. But let's continue. Going back to what I was just said, the angry man said, I do feel like this generation is definitely soft. They're definitely emotional. Trucker yell. See, and, I, and now I got kicked off the panel That's because I was spitting yeah. too many facts. Damn. Is he really dropping everybody? He's spitting too many facts. Did he really drop everybody? Oh, she ain't playing. And he, dropped, he dropped five people. Salute. <laughs> God damn. He dropped five people. Salute. He said the whole motherfucking panel, but, but his, money, his money dropped five people. Salute to you, Trucker. You are OG in the game. Salute to you, man. See? He was Correct. really annoyed by the hey. conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Trucker. You know, salute to you, fam. Because it's a disingenuous conversation. Yeah. It's just It is, and it's because of y'all. Just like Podcast said a second ago, millennials, technically, you only make more money because shit costs more. No, that's not true. Yeah. I already, I already really? explained how that's not true. That's why they kicked me off the panel before they said that bullshit. Because if I was on there, I would have clicked that point and they knew it. So here's the part where they kicked me off the panel and then they talk a bunch of shit after they kicked all the millennials off the panel and we can't say anything to defend ourselves, which is whack, but that's what they chose to do. At a certain point, we came back up. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? I think it's around here. Hang on. They're, they have literally started gangbanging with each other over blocks where they sell cigarettes at. I'm mm. not even... It was it Rock Kim and all them niggas? Yo, they was spitting game. Because and that's what I'm saying. Like, niggas don't really know what it's like. Like, if you... That powder is for me, bro. Right. Get that we gonna, we gonna get the true that table because he was spitting, too. Let me get to his part. Oh, that... Disconnect because of, here we go. You know, regardless, he was spitting. And, and it's a, he was spitting too. Watch my man True Table come in here spitting the facts. See, I don't want smart millennials on the panel, man. Watch this. No doubt. Hey, yo, y'all know. Hey, True, what's up next? What, what up, True? What's good, family? How man, you doing? What's going on, family? What's going on, man? Nothing much. I've been listening in. Uh, if I can add some 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 elements to the conversation. And angry man, you touched on it lightly moments ago. 
Um, these, this is a fruitful conversation, but I hate conversations like this because it is a competition and we're a monk family, you know, regardless. Exactly. You turn it into a competition instead of just letting it be what it is, which is exactly what I said they were going to do. Keep cooking, True. Your last name, we're a monk family. And so what I think I've heard from the younger generation and then maybe even the older generation is there is a disconnect because the older generation perception of respect is very different. I think the older generation got conditioned to think respect looks one way. And I think that the younger generation is defending the fact that, look, check it out. We're supposed to be, do better than you. That is actually the, that means something occurred. If we're still alive, if there's elements of advantage that you didn't have. And I think we talked about it earlier on the show where some people from the older generation are competing with the people from the new generation. Then you have this. That's the women. Exactly. Y'all competing. With you. you should be happy millennials are getting to the bag, but they want to make excuses for why it is. Childish. That's why I said it's like talking to women. Childish. You should be proud your man make more money and that he wants to take care of you. Instead, it's like, nah, I can take care of myself. <laughs> like, what, what is that? What is that? And notice how he said it's like y'all competing against us. That's exactly what they're doing. That's exactly why there's a disconnect. Dude's going to talk about some it's the women. No, this is men don't, who don't want to take an L, who don't want to give no credit. This is men. There's men. That's men doing this. But let's continue. That's doing that. Right. Well, it's not just the women, brother. I've never met a, a newer, a, a older generation sitting there trying to compete with a young buck. No. That's uh, what this whole conversation is old dudes trying to compete with young dudes when it comes to making money. That's literally what this whole entire conversation is about. <laughs> He's, I'm telling you, the cognitive dissonance in Generation X is insane, man. I want y'all to realize as soon as he came and tried to make one point, which is, hey, man, you know, y'all should be happy for us if we're doing better. Wouldn't that mean you did something right? Even if you give them a compliment before you hit them with a truth, they're still going to feel attacked by the truth. It's like talking to a girl. You can be like, hey, look, you're beautiful. But maybe instead of doing this, doing that, she goes, oh, blah, 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 blah. that's Generation X in a nutshell. <laughs> They didn't even let my man finish his point. The whole damn panel, soon as he tried to say something about them, the whole panel goes on attack. No accountability at all. That's why I said I won the debate in the first eight minutes. This whole panel continues to prove my point. No accountability, can't take no L's. It doesn't matter how it's articulated or brought to them or who brings it. Let's continue. No. Well, what I would have to say is that I can't speak to your experience. I can speak to what I've seen. I can speak to what I believe I know. And that um, there was jobs I showed up after the military. I'll give you a perfect example. When I went to work for Boeing, um, because it was a grandfather type of job, the, that was a job you worked 20, 30 years. I was a young kid on the line. I came out making good money. I saved some of my money from the military, so I drove a Beamer at the time. I kid you not, they sabotaged me to even get set up to lose that job. Because of the fact that I was younger, I was able to work harder. And I mean, I had some people inside that were honest with me. They told me we're intimidated because of the fact that you, you have opportunities. I learned things faster. There's a whole bunch of elements. I'll spare you guys the details. But I think that it, we're, we're, we all want the same thing. Older generation, new generation. We want to, you know, be respectful. What? That's what Somebody I said, I see men trying to compete with younger generation men. Anything you say, man. Anything you say, Generation X is going to say it's disingenuous or it's a lie. It's not true. I told y'all, excuses and explanations are the same thing. That's all they're doing is making excuses and making explanations. If they can't come up with a good enough excuse or explanation, they just say it's disingenuous. <laughs> if you're young, let's see. Well, Mike, let's finish. My bad, my bad. And then I'm going to read yeah. the super chats yeah. so that you can rock, okay? Let, let them finish, though. Go ahead. Go ahead, True. Yeah, I think that it is dismissive when someone says... Well, you're young. And I think it's also dismissive when you say someone, well, you're old. I think that there needs to be some level of just a mutual humanistic respect to understand that regardless of what we see now current, the Internet is a leverage tool. It's things that we can do that the older generation can never do. I have conversations with my dad and I try to talk to him about money and leverage and credit and EBITDA and all that. And this stuff goes over his head. It's, 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 it's too advanced. So I respect and understand that regardless of you know, what I know, and as much as I want him to grow at our pace, it's just not realistic. At the same time, the older generation does need to understand that the younger generation doesn't perceive respect the same way. And at times when you say you're young, you don't know nothing. Well, you just being alive, 
you don't get credence for just existing and living. And our generation Thanks. is more result based driven. So if Thanks. you want some respect from the younger generation, you have to have results. Facts. I'll digress. My mic is muted. They don't have results, though. Well, I mean, I was something. Mr. Rissa, what, one quick okay. second, because Trucker was next. Let me read the super chat. Trucker's next, and then you can go after Trucker, okay? Uh, cigarette man. How don't nine. we have results? She said they don't have results. She didn't even say some. You see what I'm talking about? Everything's an absolute. And they had everyone who's young is broke. I know for a fact I got more money than at least half this panel. He probably do, too, the man in the Beamer. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> for, the, for their arguments to work, they have to shoehorn you into a specific type. They have to force you to answer questions a certain way. Otherwise, their arguments don't work. They can't flow in the terms of the conversation. They can't do it. Uh, you silence a young man that is misguided. You were his age at one time. Instead of guiding him, them to the, f to the light, you silenced him. Okay. You damn skip y'all did. And I, I'm the old man on the porch. I don't want to deal with you new weak ass niggas. I don't want to deal with that no more. Okay. I'm sick of you young niggas. See, look, we, we knew weak ass niggas. We all this stuff. But when we called them broke, which they are, they get mad. They get offended. They want to kick you off the panel. They want to pay 200 bucks just so they don't got to hear about their damn flaws. <laughs> That's crazy when you think about it. But let's continue. Let me just read that. Hey, listen, it goes both ways. If y'all want to mute old heads, y'all call them old heads. Y'all want to mute them. It's the same twenty dollars on the cash app. No, uh, you would have got punched in the mouth for saying the, that shit. The Shack Channel uh four one five, and then you can rock Angry Man, but and then uh Trucker. Okay, I'm one of those. Am I had a job and hustled and the the tenderloin. What's that? San What's Francisco. It? Okay, and is. My mom used to sell nachos with government cheese. <laughs> oh, wow. How'd you do that? And that's how we moved out of Fillmore. Wow. How the hell did she make nachos out of government cheese, fam? Yeah, Your mom you was a special woman. What? She was a special woman to do that. Uh, special woman, because that cheese never moved. Yo, that's... Oh, that's my God. Hey, yo, go ahead, Angry Man. Angry Man went to rock in the truck oh. and then Miss Orissa. So this, this is my problem with the youth right the youth like to gaslight the way women do and the dude just did it in the super chat before the last super chat where he said you silence the young man who was misguided instead of guiding him but when we were trying to guide him he wasn't listening okay so this is what this is what y'all y'all do the same thing that women do you know what women say you men don't lead and in the moment you try to lead them they tell you shut up. I just want to say really quick, they're doing the same thing that women do as well. And that is not taking accountability or responsibility for any goddamn thing and just using the excuses and explanations to get out of every damn thing. So we both got the same problem with each other, but let's continue. So we're not going to get around that. We're not going to get around it. And it goes back to the whole thing. Let me just say this and then y'all can read the next one. It goes back to the whole thing. It's just like when I was in the nation, there was a brother in there that was the that was the head minister of the mosque. There was a lot of stuff he didn't know how to do. Right? There was brothers in the mosque that knew how the new credit and all of that. He didn't know all of that, right? Does that mean he was supposed to get less respect in the mosque? Being the head being the, uh the head dude in charge? No. Because it's about hierarchy. And the reason why millennials and, and on down are having so many problems is because they've been sold this individualistic mind frame. And they don't understand the only way men accomplish shit is they have to be organized and they have to understand hierarchy. And he just mentioned hierarchy, which is exactly why I said millennials shouldn't be making more money than Generation X is making. Because in terms of hierarchy, they have seniority, which means they'll be first in line to get the promotions. They'll be first in line to get the raises and they will have a higher position to do the working at the companies longer. But, you know, when, when you're making the point against Generation X... All the logic goes out of the window and you're being disingenuous unless it's just that they're better. <laughs> All right, my man said, young Pippin, look, if you know what I know. Let's get back to the convo. We don't need no more super sass being right. Books everywhere, man. What you, what you talking about? I got books. Is it? The horse. I, I, got, a ton, oh, I got books the, everywhere, man. fam. I can read. It's just that, you know, people, the way people say Oh, uh, 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 trucker, and then Miss Orissa. Trucker, no, trucker, uh, trucker, no, no. 
Trucker than Miss Arissa than you. Go ahead, Trucker. Uh, I'm finna pay to get you okay. that. Good. $150. Damn. To the cash app. <laughs> if you send it anywhere else, so, you just got beat. Dollar so, sign is real um, $150. Okay. True table. Uh, I I agree with you saying, dog. Um, about the disconnect. The, the but see, the difference is is that, like podcast said, the OGs, the the old people sitting on the porch, we had that, and that gave us the game. And most of us that was running the streets, including myself, we took it. I stood like we took it, dog. Took it. But these new niggas, these I mean. I'm, these new black people, okay? <laughs> These niggas is it's soft. I think that's our biggest. I think that's our biggest regret in our generations is that a lot of these parents are trying to be wasn't trying to do the shit that our people was doing, like whoop your ass, come up to the school, and literally whoop your ass in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like or after school, whoop your ass on the school bus. Ride behind the school bus, then whoop your ass after you get off the school bus. And it wasn't like. All right, they did all that, and y'all still boomed up the single parent ratio. They did all that, y'all was still going to jail. They did all that, y'all still broke. So, what was the point? Away with the shit that you do with now. Like, literally, you could be four blocks away, and one of the OGs might see some shit you do, and before you walk back home or into your home, you got your ass whooped. And a lot of these kids is. I hear crying and all this. And we sitting there just laughing like you niggas. I wish, wish. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if Tupac and Biggie or Michael Jackson had fucking internet. But, um, I mean, think like for real, like the real activists, Sharada, Ali, if all them niggas really had the internet. Now they're going back to the argument which has already been defeated multiple times of we're only successful because we have the internet. Despite the fact that I've, at this point, numerous times have mentioned numerous things that millennials are doing that does not involve the internet. Despite the fact that I've mentioned numerous times that a lot of Generation X only has money because of the internet, including several of the people on this damn panel, they're still going back to the same points. The cognitive dissonance is insane with these folks. <laughs> it's literally insane. Like now, like back then, this shit would have never, man, listen, this shit would have never occurred. This shit is insane to sit here and listen to young dudes call old, old niggas like old heads. Nigga, the old heads back then would have whooped your ass. 65 nigga would have beat your ass on the streets. Well, I think it's, you know what I'm saying? I think it's fair to conceptualize what you're saying. Uh, I'd say that the argument is kind of counterproductive because with advancements, everybody softens. You know, that's like saying Facts. that we're soft because we live around air conditioning. That's like uh, saying. Facts. Let me know. Oh, yeah. That's like saying. True. true. One second. Miss Arissa was next and, and then podcast and then you. Oh. All right, go ahead. He's go ahead. cooking. See, whenever you start cooking, they silence you. So. No, I'm old. I forgot. But honestly, <laughs> but, listen, but um, I don't have a problem with um, with the younger generation as far as learning certain things from them because I've had managers who were younger than me. My manager now on my job is younger than me. I have a problem listening to them at all. I have a problem when they take offense to absolutely everything you say. And the first thing they say is old head. I, I got my great uncle is about to be, he's like late 80s now just saw him last weekend still in his right mind I would never disrespect I could never disrespect him ever disrespect my uncle Tommy Lee he is the freaking best never but nowadays this younger generation that's all they do is take shots at you but I'm like y'all not even making it to our age you can talk about crackheads but I'm no crackheads who did crack and they're 80 years old now. You know what I'm saying? Still like, old. Look, no, they still defending crackheads. Right. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. Still so, it's true. Miss so Orissa. Uh-huh. Miss Orissa, my grandmother could barely work the TV. She didn't know nothing about the internet. She didn't know nothing about stocks and bonds. She didn't know nothing about none of that shit. I hung on every word she said because she had so much fucking wisdom. Mm-hmm. So much wisdom. Yeah. Right. Yep. And see, that's the thing. They're so busy trying to discredit us. 
And, you know, and, and this we is- haven't discredited them one time. As a matter of fact, we've been giving them certain points. They've been trying to discredit us this entire damn argument. Cognitive dissonance, man, is crazy. But we get ready to wrap this up. Boyfriend, we talk about he, he got a 31 year old son. And he tell him the same thing. He said he, it was some stuff his son was saying to him. He said, son, can, just keep living. That's what we tell the younger generation now. Just keep living. No matter what, keep living. He just told his son that. His son Let's was say, thinking I apologize, Mr. Rissa, one second. And, and so y'all he, notice how Angry Man and I call Arissa, Miss Arissa, and she's really only literally like a few years older than us. But that's yeah. just a record. But but I want you to finish. But I just want to point out, yo, y'all gotta stop doing this, fam. Y'all see, I I explained it. I, it's written down. It's on. Uh, he about to complain about the chat. We like, don't care about that. Can't be no more. Y'all, it's no different than Fight Club. If you go, oh, you're just fifty, you know. <laughs> new ideas about utilizing my credit cards more and stuff so um that's the only thing that i have just the oh here and i know i'm not perfect because i know i've took some shots at some folks before too (laughs) um it's something that i'm going to change myself because it's just only fair that you know I, i if i want respect i do have to give it to them but you don't even have to be disrespectful to them they just automatically come at you that way so all right, let me go and get this show so I can go and drop down and let y'all have. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, this was a really good show. It is I'm gonna have to try. It to was a really good. You know what I'm saying? Put my put my best foot forward coming up this week. It's look, it's a friendly competition between all us over here at this point. You know what I'm saying? We we all trying to succeed, but at the same time, I want my panels to be good. I want my shows to be good. I want my shit to be the best. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like Pog, I won't. When if, if Angry Man ever say, "Yo, who got the best show on Toxic the Bench?" I want everybody to say podcast, right? <laughs> Anybody that say is or how to, fuck y'all. <laughs> um, and, and the second thing I want to say is, so you just gonna bully like, people? Wait, wait. So you just gonna bully people into liking your funky ass show? Fact. That's what you gotta do. That's a, that's, a <laughs> that's, what you gotta do. that's a fact. If I hit the bag, I just pay him to do it. But unfortunately, okay. I don't. So I gotta bully him, right? Okay. But. The second thing I want to say is, is it petty that I like saying is angry? <laughs> Y'all yeah, keep super chat. Fuck this <laughs> nah, yo, I'm a, I'm a roll up on angry man. If they keep super chat. I'm a roll up on angry man. Angry man have to break <laughs> right. me off. I don't give a fuck. Angry Nobody saying angry man has to break me off, man. Fuck that. That's just wild, nah. man. Nah, but listen, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get off too, man. Uh, you out of here, truck? Why you out? Yeah, I gotta go uh, chill with the family. All right, man. We appreciate right, you, Chuck. Chuck. Thank you, thank you, man. Y'all, Lou, to your house. Be safe out there, man. In, in oh, direct God. response to what Drew was saying, um, to about you know the young people and the way that they view respect and all that, in real life, um, Gen X's at this point, we would still beat y'all ass. So I don't give a fuck what. Sess, you think you got, and we ain't respecting you, and we don't see, we looking at results, and all. the result is, I'm still here, motherfucker. That means I'm still right. <laughs> I got kids, I got a mama, a father, I got siblings, I got some motherfuckers that if I point at you, they would make your life very hard for you. It would require a lot of straw <laughs> and a lot of soft foods. So all I'm saying is, is at the end of the fucking day, bro, we fucking matter. Fuck outcomes. That shit don't mean nothing. You made it outcomes one hundred percent mean something. One hundred percent. And it's funny that they swear that they should just get respect because they matter, but they don't give it to the silent generation or the baby boomers. They actually blame them for everything all the goddamn time, and they call them old and all types of shit. So it's just funny, but whatever. I'm about to cook one more time, and then we're gonna get out of here. I don't know how much you made. But let's just say I'm going to give you 200 bands a year right now. It's a motherfucker out here that make a hundred times more than you. He make that shit every month. So keep your fucking respect because of outcomes to your fucking self. Because you ain't making as much as a motherfucker that make more than you. They will look at you like you a bum because you can't buy an island. Nobody (laughs) called anyone a bum. But if someone was making more money than me, then at that point, they would be qualified to talk to me about making money and I would listen. <laughs> like that, That's all I was saying. 
That's all, was, that's all we've been saying. That's fair. Y'all talk about listening to a goddamn crackhead. I make more money than I know for a fact than I at least half of this damn panel and y'all still ain't listening. So what point does that make? Rigged elections because you can't change the outcome of sports games. So take your respect for outcome and shove that shit up your ass. <laughs> How about this? I'm a man, nigga, and I'm raising my kids. What my the son hell? is about to graduate school on time, and we got a whole plan for his future, which includes investing. My daughter work and she ain't on the pole, and her credit score is seven fifty. So because I added her to my credit cards, including my credit cards. Good job. So, well, while you talking about my outcome, don't worry about me. I got uh, kids. Good. Worry about how my kids. Nobody said anything about her specifically. See what I said when I said they act like girls? Internalizing it. We talking in general and they internalizing everything being said as a personal attack. So it's like talking to women and children. Tell me off how my kids are doing. Fuck, don't worry about what section eight I got or how much I'm making with my podcast or none of that other shit. 50% of you niggas' asses I will kick, and the other 50% of you, me and my brothers, don't kick you. So don't worry about none of that shit. But Fuck, one quick I'm going to tell you something. Pod. I'm telling you because I want to see you win. But, yes. but podcast. Real quick, podcast. Real quick, podcast. Real, real quick. My bad. Go ahead, Angry Man. Now, he finna say something about my mama, angry man. Go ahead. Let me say No, wait, wait, wait. Go podcast. You gotta realize if you were to slap the phone out of a millennial's hand, he would look at you and say, So not cool, man. <laughs> That's all he would say. That's all he would say. Yeah. Right, this is what he would do. He would say, he would say, this is what he would do. He would say, Let me borrow your phone. And then he'll take my phone, and instead of throwing it down, he'll just order himself another phone. Because <laughs> they give it to the money. I'm a credit to that, bro. <laughs> no, it's some, I'm telling you, all my little cousins got four, five streams of incomes. Okay? One thing I will say is that you, the younger generation now, understands not to put all their eggs in one basket. They're not necessarily trying to, try to sit up and give one company 35, 40 years of their life. That's the thing that I give to the younger generation. And wow. I salute and I celebrate y'all. And that's why for me, when I hear, it's not like none of these guys have ever given me a whole lot of disrespect. Only a couple of them whose asses I would kick. But none of them really give me a whole lot of disrespect. But it's like when I do hear the lack of appreciation for the experience itself, it is kind of disheartening. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, no, I celebrate y'all, man. So... Celebrate us. Celebrate the fact that we question really quick. See, see, he's trying to give a compliment right now by finally admitting that we get into the bag, which we didn't even have to have this whole damn two hour conversation if he would have just gave me that in the first damn place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at least podcasts half a minute. But he again, same thing women do. So if they want to say we act like women. Same thing women do. Okay, all that might be true, but what about me? Can you show me some love? Can you show me some respect? Let's talk about us. Pay me attention, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you, you can't. It's a backhanded compliment because it's like, okay, I'll give you that, but give me this. I gave y'all something when I started the damn argument. <laughs> and then you still got Angry Man Israel and I like, think her name was Calissa or whatever, who still won't even concede what podcast conceded. At least podcast conceded something, goddamn. But let's continue. Barry, can I ask you a question really quick? Because I want to ask yeah. you before you get to the panel. Yeah. When you were talking just now, you were talking in general and just using me as an example, or you feel like I was really coming for your pockets? No, 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 no. Okay, I, 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 I was being funny. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, like, yeah, I was, I was being funny, and I was, right funny right now, I was, and I was using you and true. You know what I'm saying? Just because y'all are the new guys up here. I'm I'm really just kind of like, you know what I'm saying, introducing myself to you. I don't know if you all are aware of me. <laughs> But I was just being funny by bringing y'all into it. It ain't personal. What, yeah, I was, what I'm I was just, I was just saying right now though, is that, bro, I love the young generation. I love, I love, bro, I love seeing black people, black men win. I just don't like it when black men think ego is the route to take. How you, okay, let's just say I'm an average earning dude. I make 40K a year. Watch this last cook up because it's about to be a heater. Somebody stamp this because it's about to be a heater. You make 120 and you telling me I need to get my bag up because you make $80,000 more than me. When it's a motherfucker <laughs> that make 10 times more than you. Why are right. you talking to me? Worry about getting your ass to where he at. 
Don't worry about what I'm doing is what I'm saying. I just have appreciation uh, for all of the generations uh, for what they bring to the table. I want to say, no, they have experience, and I wish. I, they I, think, to do I this just want to say, I just want to say that I have dedicated a large part of my life and my career to schooling men, which includes young niggas. And I'm sick of talking to you young niggas. And I'm going to tell you why I'm sick of talking to you young niggas. Because you hard-headed in the motherfucker. <laughs> you soft as fuck. Every goddamn thing that somebody say to you, it, it hurts your fucking feelings. I'm sick. Right, now, listen to what podcast just said. And then listen to how True's been talking and how I've been talking. Y'all tell me who seem like they more in their feelings. And we supposed to be the soft ones. But Okay. <laughs> I, again, I'll give podcast this. He's the only one who finally admitted I was right. Everybody else is still pretending that I'm not. But I, my cook up is about to come. I'm about to hit him with the finisher, the Stone Cold Stunner. Then we're getting out of here. So just hold up. For you motherfuckers to be grown ass men, so when somebody says, shut your bitch ass up, you're not like, why are you going to say that to me like that? It's a, just say, <laughs> nigga, fuck you. Say, be a man, <laughs> god damn it. You see how we go back and forth? Hey, well, this is. I don't, right. I don't want it to be misconstrued. Well, you know, I may, I may look a lot younger than I am, but I'm 37 years old, so I'm very much on par with what you guys are saying. Yeah, like, they're not I'm talking well, to you, Lee. They're, they're not, not talking, talking to you. you young buck, buck, too. True. You nobody mean, mistake you. Look, true. True. Okay. Nobody mistake you for the people that they're talking about. Trust okay, me, okay, okay. 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 So, like, what's gonna? I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what the talking order is on this. Uh, but like, since I'm probably the only millennial here, uh, I, I was hoping to get my little two cents in. Yeah, you can. You let let uh, Alex. Alex was next. Uh, hold on, hold on. Alex was that practical, and then you could go after Alex. Go ahead, practical. Go ahead, Alex. Go. A practical. I'm a millennial too, man. I'm all right. Here come here come the cook up. The final cook up. Two. So so is so is Quan. I think. I'm third. So, um, sure, sure. I want to say this. Podcast, I figured that's what it was, but I only wanted to ask you because I know you said you was so dropping true. down. And if you had took it that way, I was just going to say I didn't mean it like that. But, oh, you know, no. I figured that's what it was. That's the only reason I asked you that. So I just wanted you to know I figured yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, no, um, as far as the topic, I agree. Israel, this was a great show. This was a fantastic Which it was. This was a great show. Good learning experience. Um, yeah. If y'all remember when I first came in here, I literally started with saying, I kind of hate to do this because I know it's going to turn into... A competition, and we're gonna start throwing pot shots at each other, which is fine. It makes for good, makes for a good debate, makes for a good show. It was fun, but at the end of the day, I came in saying I don't want it to turn into how the conversation between men and women in these spaces usually do, which is just that instead of getting to a point, we just take turns throwing pot shots at each other, whatever the case may be. That's why I came in immediately and was like, I'll agree that millennials are definitely soft because they are in general. Now, all of them soft? Nah. But it's funny going to podcasts, this point, a lot of millennials nowadays, you not, they fall out their hand. Yeah, they ain't going to throw hands. But a lot of millennials nowadays, especially from their hood, they'll probably just shoot you because they don't want to throw hands. <laughs> like the gun used to be the last resort. Like, you know, you, you right. went to that when it was something real serious. Now they just, they don't want to fight. They just going to shoot you because you slap the fall out of hand. But that goes back to what I was saying about the factory. It's because they're soft. Like when Angry Man's like, when they work in the factory, I'm like, no, because they're soft. Like, they're right. literally, they're but not wait, like, what? They're around with a camera. Well, and interviewed millennials and said, would you work in a factory? I pr I will put a thousand dollars on it. I'm this confident. In any city, most of them going to say, hell no. They don't even want to work regular retail jobs. Their asses ain't going to no damn warehouse and picking up 70 pounds and standing on their feet for four. They're not going to do that. They're too, well, they don't do that. Well, so, bro, um, what? But, bro, what, what, how is he going to shoot somebody? When I slap the phone out his hand, I'm going to have a gun in the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. No, I'm sure y'all would be prepared. I, I was just saying, y'all, they, they, they ain't going to throw hands Gen with my point. Gen X don't just fight. Gen X is shoot, too. <laughs> 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 I will say this. Hey, I'm going to drop down here. Let me say this. I will say this, though, Alex. I think if the money was right, they would, though. Right? Because I'm telling you, I know a lot of young cats. Like I said, they got multiple streams of income. I got one cousin specifically. He lives in Florida, in Florida, and he does iron work in Illinois. So he travels and comes and does jobs, and he'll stay in Illinois for the month and a half or whatever it takes for him to complete that job, right? But it's a bag every time he do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's 15K every time he do it. And he'll probably do it like four times a year. 
You see what I'm saying? So I think if the money was right, they would, but they just know they ain't into hard labor. Hey, is dope show. Thank you, man. My dog, you, man. my big brother. Thank you, family. Hey, practical. What up, bro? Miss Miss Arissa, Juan, Alex, true salute. Bing. Salute. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, the Shack Channel uh, 415 uh, 499 said to answer the question about moms, she used a double boiler for her candy uh, house. She also baked bean pies in her time at the NOI, the Nation of Islam, before I was born in 1980. Salam alaikum, brother. Salute to you. I would, I would, I would literally, with the exception of Miss Orissa, of course. I would fight all you niggas right now for a bean pie. For a bean pie, yeah, yeah. For <laughs> like a legit what? bean pie. I ain't have one in a minute. That joint Me dope. Either, bro. Man, 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 I, I'll, I'll Uber eat you one, man. I, I go ahead and door dash it to you. Yeah, yeah I, I need a go go on this, brother. They, got they don't got them like that where we're at. Like all over the for get bean pies. They be selling them jokes with the suits. They be having the suits on. They get it. What's that? Yeah, see my man here. Yeah, the final call. But that's that's because you you're in Dag on DC, Mo. So you in DC, Mo? You in DC, bro? Yeah, that's that's where you at. Hey yo, so let me let me let my man Practical Absolutes. I'm like brother. Let my let my man Practical Absolutes get in here. What's up, family? Like my son, to about to to. Hope y'all doing well. I was going on to the chat. This is a great show. First and foremost, uh, it's really a lot I could say because I was listening and soaking it all up and whatnot. But uh. Uh, I'll start by saying this. Uh, uh, I remember old heads, you tell me, they was all like, uh, you know, uh, whenever you take from something, you always give more than what you take, whether it be respect or whatever, whatever you feel me? But if someone pissing your cereal, you throw that shit right at their face, you feel me? Like, So when I'm saying that, I mean that like, yeah, uh, I'm I'm very known with people, everybody who know me personally in real life, um, they know that I'm, I give respect uh, like on the extreme level I say sir even when people say don't say sir I still say it by just reaction because it's just what I do all the time and I say ma'am as much as possible you know what I'm saying but a quick story on that is like since my my, my real name is Qaddafi you know and um someone had came it was an older dude that came to me it was a black dude he was all like Qaddafi like the terrorist I said no nah, like the motherfucker you stand there right now you know what I'm saying and uh I ain't considered it disrespectful because he said Qaddafi like a terrorist, and he ain't had to open his mouth and say that shit. You feel me? Like there was no need for him to say that. So um, it's it's a, I think. And I also don't think it's um, it should be variations on respect. I think the older way of determining what respect is is way better than any of the newer ways because there is no new ways. There's no different ways of of respect. It's just respect. You feel me? You give the common decency as a human being, and there is a hierarchy. So. You give more respect to individuals who are clearly on a higher social status than you. You know what I'm saying? And a good way to determine social status nowadays, even though, uh, to quickly segue, True's point, he has said, uh, uh, we are, when you get more, uh, when you get more things or a better lifestyle or you move up, you get weaker. I don't want to agree with that, but I understand what he's saying. And a manifestation of that is, uh, actually it's, it's fine. It's money. Before money was a thing and whatnot, we had paper monetary system and whatnot. We had uh, warriors and wa those who was like conquering stuff and those who was fighting. They had parcels of land and silver and gold given to them, you know, and those are the ones who were uh, at the highest of the social class. Irrespect, were, were not including the, the, you know, the, the kings and all the, the royalty and all those political figures and stuff. But nowadays, we have a monetary system, and it works just as effectively in terms of determining and delineating the social hierarchy. So if someone has more money than you, then, yeah, they're going to be higher on the social uh, hierarchy uh, whatnot, um, and all that stuff. And I will say that men in my generation are largely weak. A lot of them are pussies, and it's sad. Um, a lot of them got, you know what I'm saying, premature gonads. You feel me? A lot of us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ain't uh growing no beers out, even if you can. You know what I'm saying. Like, and you you see how practical. Even the youngest one out of all of us is still willing to take some L's. More L's than Gen X outside a little podcast is willing to take. <laughs> but again, we we about to wrap this up because I already made my point that I where I said the conversation was going to go is exactly where the conversation went because Generation X acts like women and children and they take no accountability and they give an explanation. OK, or to give an excuse for every damn thing. But I'm going to let my man finish up because he's cooking. Uh, have a lack of purpose. You feel me? And and I'll just end with this. You feel me? Like, I ain't here to toot my own horn, but I got a 
I got a missed, I got a, a bleeding knuckle for, you know what I'm saying, for no mistake, you feel me? I be out here really training and working hard, trying to become stronger, you feel me? So I had a lot more I could say, but I kind of forgot the rest. <laughs> Salute to you. Hey, True, you wanted to get in there. What's up, family? No, yeah, uh, appreciate that practical. No, what I was saying to uh, Trucker Yell's point is not to say that we're weaker. It's that with progression, with the advancement in technology, it echoes across everyone. It's not a male thing. It's not a female thing. So some of the comparisons are kind of doesn't make sense. It's like saying someone driving a Tesla is weaker because that's an actual avenue of transportation compared to a combustion engine, which we know has been around for you know some time now. It's just the, the change of the times that just technology will affect people. So people will start to utilize them to speed up things, introduce process. Henry Ford introduced the whole conveyor belt in the system of creating the four vehicles. That wasn't a weak move. That was an advancement. So people stop building in the same way. That's all I was really alluding to. Hey, can I get in real quick? Because I think we missing something. And what I believe we missing is the fact that it's not that we're not showing respect. It's the fact that we set in a standard. Because too often what happens is that because we give the pass to the crackhead, to the baby mother. Oh, man, here come the crackhead, To all these people because they got (laughs) stories. We end up giving them a pass and validating that shit. So it's like, no, I'm setting the standard. I'm not listening to no nigga who only got stories for me about being that shit. We need to set a standard. And when you go this long as a people constantly saying, you know what? I know that they do this, but they still have this to offer. Then it's no wonder when these people start to become your representation. We give the pass to the baby mother for so long. Guess who our representation now for women are? We give the pass to the crackheads for so long. Guess who's now our representation? So it's not a necessarily we're not showing respect. It's the fact that we as a people, we got to set a standard. Yes, this crackhead might have some knowledge here and there. But do we want them to represent us when you constantly giving them a pass? I spoke, I spoke to that. I said that we're a generation of results. So I agree with you. And that's what I was trying to echo that being on the younger side, it is. We're results. I can tell you that all day. Most of the things that I heard from the older generation and even, you know, even the newer, I look at it like, well, I look at what y'all did, but some of what you did work, some of what you did was affected. But you guys have some gaps. But that's natural. That's just natural progression. There's things that we're going to do. Fast forward 20 years, we're going to be hearing different things too. So I spoke to that. I also want to add in. (laughs) (laughs) One one quick second. I got to read the cash out. They said, Quan got to go. Quan got to go. Sorry, Mo. And you know what to do if you want to get back up, Quan. All right. Go ahead. I also want to add in that um, I do agree with podcasts 100% that trying to flex money is corny because it's always someone who got more money than you. But I will also say with that, it's usually Gen X who bringing up the money. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're right. 100%, 100% facts. It's Gen X who's bringing up the money. The first things when I first came out here was people saying, oh, Alec probably don't really got it like that. Or y'all, do y'all young dudes think I got more money than the people on the panel? It's like, I kind of try to stay. I like the flex, don't get me wrong, right? So I was tempted to be like, <laughs> Who don't got money like that? I just got two car keys he can show you. I just got two phones he can show you. I just can go outside right now and show you a view of downtown. So wait, why are you speaking in third person? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you speaking in third person, family? What's up with that? Yeah, came out. Came out. What's what's this came Alex out. Alex shit? Really you out. know you talking about yourself, right? Came out. That's right. Check him on that one. Because it was written in a comment. Oh, Alex, oh, okay. Biden got money. That's why I'm okay, gotcha. I you thought you were going to dangle keys. Bro. Yeah, you ain't the only one that got more than three. No, I know I'm not. Three keys. I know, I know I'm not. But, but I'm just saying, it was the <laughs> older brought that up. Oh, these young dudes don't got no money. Y'all don't got no money like no one on the panel. And I'm like, this is probably what I mean when I'm like, people just making assumptions. You know, y'all well, just the thing, Alex, ass. They just make the assumption Alex. that because Alex, you're young, you don't got it together. Alex, Not all of y'all. I'm just talking about. But here's the thing, Alex. We didn't actually bring that up. I didn't see a young dude bring it up. 
But Alex, here's the thing. This is what you got to realize about our generation. What you got to realize about the 80s babies is that's what we do. We we talk shit to each other. You you did you ever watch Payton Full? Yeah, of course. Huh, class. Okay, you remember when he was like, "Yo, yo, you gonna stop acting like you getting money like we getting money?" You know what I'm saying? We see the thing about it is amongst us, that was never seen as an insult. That was seen as motivation. Like, yo. Now, nah, do I feel what Angry Man saying right now? This is a good point to wrap it up because it proves what I've been saying this whole time. Yes, I get what he's saying about just talking shit and not seeing it as an insult. Then why did podcast go on that whole rant by even though you have money, it's always someone who has more money than you, so you shouldn't be talking about money. <laughs> I said I agree with podcast. Angry man basically saying, nah, man, if you want to flex, flex. So then you basically saying that pod, what podcast said was bullshit. And that he basically was low-key in his feelings because millennials do make more than y'all. All y'all in y'all feelings because millennials make more than y'all. <laughs> so is the video literally proving my point right now. Come through, you got to watch, nigga, be like, yo, where you get that from? Oh, man, this is a little something, something, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then a nigga would want to get a better watch than you or a nigga would want to get a better whip than you. It was just competition amongst us because niggas was trying to get more. You know what I'm saying? He got booted. <laughs> yeah, he got he got booted. They say no, they say you gotta go. Listen, if y'all want to get back on, y'all yeah, I got I got booted for telling the truth again. <laughs> the angry man basically just said it's nothing wrong with judging people about money. That's how we do. We talk shit after the podcast went on a whole tangent about how it's fucked up that millennials talk shit about making more money than Generation X, even though we do. <laughs> so as you guys can see, the cognitive dissonance, the hypocrisy. The sign language, really, the same insult, guilt, and need to be right. It's all there. So we ended the video just how we started the video, where I told y'all the disconnect between millennials and Generation X is that Generation X behaves and acts like a bunch of children. <laughs> and you have to constantly stroke their ego or they get in their feelings. And they get in their feelings and they got a problem and they get mad and you end up in a two-hour debate. <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, there was a lot of good points made, man. Uh, I thought this was a really good conversation. I thought this was a really good show, man. So I wanted to do a reaction to that so I could kind of elaborate on some of my points that I didn't get a chance to on the panel because you got to give other people a chance to speak. Um, but y'all let me know in the comments. I can confidently say that I feel like I'm still undefeated on the panels. Undefeated on the panels, man. But um, salute the angry man in them, man, because they always ultimately let me come up there, you know, and get that debated. And like I said at the beginning of the video, man, if you're the smartest person in the room, you can't grow. You need to find another room. So I like to go into places and debate other people, go into hostile territory, walk into the lion's den, see if I can win. You know what I mean? But again, I hope y'all got something out of this. Uh, like I said, I do think it was a good conversation. I do think a lot of good points was made. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. But two hours, that's about a sweet spot. So we're going to get out of here. I am Alex and I am out. Peace.